Welcome to the TVHM part of this guide. TVHM stands for True Vault Hunter Mode and can be thought of as the new game plus for Borderlands 2, meaning the enemies will have more health and do more damage to you. You'll also encounter some different enemy types, which can really ruin your day if you're not careful. Looking at you, rabbit skags. Also, starting in TVHM, I highly recommend that you get familiar with the slag mechanic if you haven't already. It won't matter too terribly much in TVHM, but will become a necessity in UVHM, so it's best if you get used to it by now. Since I already did a long introduction at the start of the first video, I won't be going over it here again. Same goes for the skips, I explained most of them in a previous video, so I won't be showing them off again. In general, I recommend watching that video first since that can clear up some questions you might have. Here I'm just going over all the gear that we found in normal mode, as well as my skill tree. This guide assumes that you have all the gear available. Alright, let's get into the actual guide. Hope you enjoy. With the way TVHM works, it'll be a lot faster than normal mode. So starting out, you just want to follow the main mission. If you remember, we found to around level 37 and a half in a previous video. This is because we want to scale the In Memoriam quest to level 38, which is its maximum level. But the scaling works a bit differently than it does in normal mode. While there it relies on the level you're at when turning the main mission into Lilith, here it depends on the level you are when first entering Three Horns Divide. Not sure why they decided to do it that way, that's just how it works. So you want to follow the main missions and make sure you're level 38 by the time you turn the mission into Claptrap. Then we make our way to Sanctuary and straight to Lilith. TVHM works a bit oddly when it comes to fast travel stations, so there are some that you can instantly unlock if you just save quick. So you can skip driving there and just travel there instantly. Frostburn is one of those maps, there's no need to farm anything at this point. Once we save Lilith, we get the quest for the fastball and farm that, as well as a Herald. The Herald is just a really strong pistol and will carry us through most of this playthrough. Once we get those, we'll go meet Ellie and get the parts. Now there are two things to note about cars in this game. As you progress through the game modes, the cars don't really scale with you, so the health will become irrelevant. Secondly, for some reason, if you get in your car with the B-Shield equipped, it'll apply the amp damage to your car's shots, which makes getting the parts really easy. Now when in Bloodshot, as we did in normal mode, we'll farm Baronmon to level 43. Not only is this a very comfortable level to progress very far into DVHM without having to farm for EXP again, but it also allows us to get Converge, one of Maya's most useful skills. Cause combined with Ruin, you are able to slag a lot of enemies from far away. Once we're at 43, we'll do the same thing we did in normal mode. Go to Rotcut Distillery and get a new adaptive shield. Then we can just push through most of the story without having to stop. So here we go. We save Roland from the big toaster. Here we can save quit again to go straight to Tundra Express, meet Tina, get the rockets, blow up the train, will kill Helm, get Sanctuary in the air and get to the fridge. Here again, we can skip the entire fridge by just safe quitting and fast traveling to the outwash. Here we'll fight the thrasher and get the travel unit. Now here we can safe quit twice to have overlook unlock instantly. It's a bit weird since there's no actual fast travel station there yet, but just don't worry about it. Once Overlook is done, we grab the next main mission and Doctor's orders. Again, as a normal mode, I don't bother farming the midgets, but if you want to, you can. For most of the boss fights, I just used to be I have and a Lady Fist, so we do just that with Bloodwing. Brick, do his thing, and go to Opportunity. Now before I do the bunker, I like to farm some more XP since at this point we will be a bit under level. For this I just use the Snowman Headhunter that we used at the end of normal mode. The B you have should work for the kill, but if the Snowman does make it to the elevator you can kinda hide right beside it till you'll be far enough away that his attacks won't reach you. I farm here until around 46 and a half, since I want to be level 47 by the time we get back to Sanctuary to scale the Heartbreaker quest as we did in normal mode. Maybe that helps you kill stuff better. 
Once we're done with the farming, we do the entire bunker sequence. The bunker fight itself might take a bit longer than it did in normal mode, but the Herald should still work comfortably for this. After Roland takes off with Jack, we get the mission for Marcus. Killing Blue is a lot easier now, because, for some reason, even though grenades usually can't hit crits, they can on the legs of crystalists. So if we pair the 800% crit of the Lady Fizz with a fastball, we can kill Blue without any issues, turning it into Moxie again so we can farm a matching grip heartbreaker. I recommend still keeping your Herald though, since it'll become useful when fighting Saturn later, so don't get rid of it. With that acquired, we go to the Iridium Blight and then to Sawtooth. But again, not doing Sawtooth just yet. I like to get one more level so that I can finish the main story without any more XP farm. And since the scaling doesn't work in TVHM as it does in normal mode, I can't farm Mobley and Gettle, so I just do King Monk. I mean, a chance at about a boom is nothing to scoff at anyway. When at 48, we go and make our way through Sawtooth. The Heartbreaker should be strong enough that you don't have any issues with this map. Really, the only thing to look out for is that this map is known for throwing some really nasty enemies your way. So if you see any enemy holding a launch or even two of them, get rid of them immediately. After that, we head to the Boneyard and again, farm a B shield, finally upgrading our old one. Now here I recommend getting one that you can use instantly, so level 48 or lower. It really doesn't matter which kind you get, since we'll be replacing it after beating the story anyway. Speaking of beating the story, starting UVHM you want to be as close to level 50 as possible, as to not face issues there, since UVHM enemies will scale to your level, but DVHM caps out at 50, so going into UVHM and facing say level 57 enemies with level 50 guns will not be a fun time. This is why, going forward for the rest of TVHM, I will be doing all the farming with read only, as to not gain any experience, starting with this very farm here. Once we get a new B shield, we make our way through the pumping stations and over to Saturn. If you still have your Herald, you can use it here with your new B to kill the giant robot. For general combat, I recommend using the Lady Fist though. After getting the warrior's location, we make our way to the hero's path. As a normal mode, I suggest hiding behind this crate and focusing on a badass surveyors once they spawn. Hero's path is just the same as it was in normal mode. Look out for enemies with RPGs and get through. Same with Jack and the warrior fight. The Jack fight is arguably easier now since with Ruin and Converge you can get all the Jacks close together and kill them with the Lady Fist. Warrior is the same as well as it was in normal mode. Just hide behind the rock, use the Slagger to break the chest and slag it, and the Lady Fist to kill it. Now if you haven't already done so in normal mode, you can use this Moonshot to farm for a fire conference call. And with that, the TVHM story is beaten, GG's. But there are still quite a bit on the farming list before we start UVHM. First are some upgrades. TVHM works in a way where once you beat the main story, everything scales to level 50. We can use that to get some gear before starting UVHM. First, a new B-Shield. I told you we'd be getting a new one soon. Then, a new Fastball and Herald. That will be useful for a lot of the UVHM playthrough. For the Fastball, I recommend getting an explosive one. I took a fire one here because I'm lazy. Do as I say, not as I do or something. Then, I go to Southpaw, Steam and Power and farm the ammo vendor there for Longbow, Zero Fuse, Tesla. For the vast majority of playtime going forward, we'll be using those as our main grenades. Maya isn't really known for being that great with nades, so I don't really use them for damage. Teslas are really good for healing with moxie guns and to block projectiles. Also, while farming here, you can also get the Zero Fuse Singularities I mentioned in the previous videos, if you haven't found them already. Once that's done, we go to Oasis. I didn't go here before because I wanted it to scale to level 50, mainly the Grand quest to get a class model with the max skill bonuses. Getting to the Grandel mission itself is pretty similar to how it was in normal mode, with one key difference. Remember how I said that the car's health doesn't really scale that well with progressing levels? Yeah, if you drive over one of those worms here, it'll do some stupid damage to your boat. So instead of dealing with the attacking boats at Scarlet fairly, I just jump up the ship with my boat and kill them from there. Just makes it easier.
Now with the Grendel mission, there's one specific class mod we want. It's really more of a utility mod, but it'll be super useful for the rest of this character. But before we found that, I go and kill Sandman so we don't have to come back. Then, I go farm for the class mod. You want a Breakneck Banshee class mod that boosts Fleet by plus 6. This will give you 11 out of 5 in Fleet and therefore 110% movement speed when your shields are depleted. But this is only one part of this utility. For the second part, we go back into Normal Mode and into the Hammerlock DLC. We go to Normal Mode because the level of the item doesn't matter. We progress the DLC until we save Claptrap from the Savages, then get the Pauling Around quest from Hammerlock. There's a fun little thing you can do with Maya during this quest. Normally the main enemy you're fighting won't be able to get damaged until you kill some of the bully monks here, unless you use Thoughtlock. For some reason, if you Thoughtlock the enemy, you can instantly start shooting it and can skip having to fight the other bully monks. The item we're after here is the Rough Rider. You can see that it has a capacity of 0, which, when paired with the speed you get from your fleet when your shield is depleted, which will be always because the Rough Rider gives you the 110% speed at all times. This can be used to speed up farms and general travel. Now regarding my skill tree, usually I'm not specced into fleet at all times, I just respec whenever I need it. Generally I'm specced into inertia since that's more useful in combat. Once we have the ability to go fast, I go back into TVHM and progress the Scarlet DLC until I get to the Pimpernel farm. Here I want a matching group shock one, since it'll be very useful for the start of TVHM. On this specific character that I used for this guide, I didn't need to do it, but generally this is the point where I would farm a better Sheriff's Patch from the Sheriff in Normal Mode. But since I got a perfect one, I'm skipping it here. And then, it's on to the last thing I get in TVHM before I start the next playthrough, a decent Fire Lady Fist. This version of the Lady Fist will not only be useful early in UVHM, but also very late into the run. Once we got that, we all geared up to take on the VHM. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I put a lot of work into the first video and its positive reception is really nice to see. I hope you are excited for the UVHM video. It'll probably take a while before that comes out though since there will be a lot to cover. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.